Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today we have something very, very exciting because the official trailer has finally dropped for One Piece Stampede and bleh, it is pretty damn incredible. This is what we've been waiting for. Teaser trailers are great and all, but there is a lot to digest here. And I usually don't do this, but I don't think there's any better way to discuss it than to go through the trailer bit by bit, because otherwise I'll get stuck going on wild tangents. And I'm also probably liable to miss something because this one minute and 42 seconds is packed full of crazy stuff that is easily overlooked upon first, second, third, and possibly even fourth viewing. So let's get straight into it because there is a ton to cover. Kicking things off, we have a very ominous location filled with bounty posters of apparently every pirate imaginable. And with this, we're already pretty bogged down in detail. Even though they only really make up the background texture, I highly encourage you to pause this trailer whenever bounties appear on screen. There are over 60 unique characters that pop up here, including some very intriguing figures like Dracul Mihawk, Lafitte, Ben Beckman, Lucky Rue, Vista, and a whole bunch of other world-renowned names. Of course, we don't see the actual bounty numbers of many of these individuals, but it is really cool just to see their poster images. With that said, take these images with, you know, a grain of salt, because stamp beat isn't canon, so when posters like Mihawks are eventually shown in the series, they may end up being different. Regardless, it is so, so cool to see some of the characters on these walls, and a couple of them are actually past movie villains, which is a nice little nod to the history of the One Piece films. Now, other than posters in the room, it would appear that we have our festival organizer, Buena Festa, speaking to our primary antagonist, Douglas Bullet. And their discussion would seem to imply that it was Bullet's idea to bring the Pirate Expo to life, which is very interesting because up until now, I'd been thinking that Bullet was going to be more of a gate crasher type character at the Expo, but no, this once in a lifetime gathering is actually his design. Desire. So at the moment, it's still very much up in the air over whether or not he's an actual bad guy looking for classic things like destruction or domination, or if he's someone trying to carry out Roger's legacy in an effort to find an individual worthy of following in his former captain's footsteps. But then we're off to the Pirate Expo with a beautiful shot of Luffy and the Thousand Sunny arriving at the island. There's another nice little freeze frame moment here where a ton of Jolly Rogers are shown, as well as a lot of cameo appearances. I'll leave it to you to spot most of them, but my favorite one of this shot is definitely Miss Monday and Mr. Nine who have brought their son to the Expo. Very sweet, a nice family trip. Then we have some words from our festival announcer, Donald Moderate, who introduces the concept that this entire expo is a hunt for Roger's treasure. So still some very vague words and nothing new in that regard, but I'm assuming that people aren't gathered here thinking that it is the One Piece. That would be a pretty insane thought even for this film, but at the same time, what other treasure is there? So many questions, so, so many questions, so much intrigue. And that certainly continues as things take an ominous turn with Smoker declaring the obvious that this is no ordinary expo. And we have a shot of what looks to be an injured Trafalgar Law before things really heat up and out of nowhere, Usopp is just on the ground all of a sudden, looking pretty worse for wear. And this was pretty unexpected because the question of why Usopp keeps playing around in my head. Like, did Bullet deliberately go after him as low hanging fruit? Or were he and Luffy the only ones together at this point? Or did Bullet manage to decimate the rest of the Straw Hats as well? And if so, why does the trailer only focus on Usopp? I don't know, I just find it a bit weird that this Usopp moment is particularly singled out, as if it is the catalyst of the more action oriented part of the film, which I just have such a hard time believing given everything that seems to be coming up. Although what this does make me think is that the Straw Hats are going to have to be taken out of the picture at some stage because Stampede seems to be quite heavily emphasizing the Dream Team, which we'll get to in a bit. So who knows, maybe the rest of the crew might actually be playing quite a backseat role for the rest of this film, which I'm okay with. We get more than enough of them in the actual series, and if you're going to stuff an entire world's worth of extended characters into this experience, then I'd much rather some extra time go into them. So next up, we're informed that quite a grim scenario is going to occur before getting a nice little introduction to Douglas Bullet, in which we see his bounty poster as well, and not only that, but at a certain point, his skin appears to be a warmer shade, very, very reminiscent of what happens to Luffy when he activates Gear Second. Very intriguing indeed, sir. Buena Festa also gets an official introduction, so it looks like he will actually be something of a minor antagonist, which I know sounds obvious, but I feel like we've really been overlooking the importance of this guy in this film, in favor of focusing on Bullet. Like I can see a scenario where Bullet comes to his senses and stops his rampaging ways, only for Festa to come in and attempt some real evil before being quickly shut down, or even the other way around, if Festa were to realize just how insane Bullet is and then try to turn good, something like that. I don't know, whatever the case is, Zoro versus Fujitora just casually showing up, sort of dress Rosa rematch, I guess. And I think it is ridiculous just how easily I could dismiss this shot and move on because that's just how much more amazing stuff is shown in this trailer. Zoro vs. Fujitora is one of the things that I am legitimately least excited to see and I love both of these characters. But what we're looking at with One Piece Stampede is just so, so much bigger. In regards to this though, this may be another way of getting rid of the Straw Hats in the film by having them fight the Marines or something while Sluffy and the Dream Team are taking on Bullet. I don't know, I mean very shortly it does state that Bullet is able to defeat both the Pirates and the Marines, but I can't possibly imagine Imagine that including Fujitora, as well as the whole host of others that we see here, one shot of which happens to be sent tomorrow with a legion of pacifista. 
take note that they are not the film Z Pacifista. Also, Fleet Admiral Sakazuki appears to possibly be there in person. I say that because his dialogue is something like, boss to call will commence. It's not a great English translation, but it might imply that he is in direct command of the forces present at the expo. Oh, and a buster call, eh? That's amping up the stakes, and quite possibly may be the reason why the entire island looks like a volcanic wasteland, by what I'm assuming are the shots that come from the third act. Also, I get the hype around stating it, but I kind of wish they hadn't revealed the use of the buster call in the trailer. That would have been a nice oh shit moment to go into the film and experience. But in all of this, we've actually skipped over a shot of Sanji facing off against Smoker, and wow, that is such a cool matchup that I've never really given much thought to. And actually, I completely missed this shot the first couple of times I watched the trailer. It just goes by so quickly and is immediately preceded by the one of Zoro and Fujitora. There is just so much great stuff in every second of this trailer. Oh, and something else we missed was Luffy in Snake Man form. That's a pretty damn big reveal there. And there's also a nice shot of him fighting fist to fist with Bullet in Snake Man form as well, and getting in a pretty damn decent hit by the looks of it. Now, judging by the green in the background and the slightly lighter shade of brown than the environment looks in what I'm assuming is the Act 3 form, I'm leaning towards this not being the final conflict, which is pretty cool because it implies that Luffy whips out Snake Man and fails, leaving this film to come up with a more unique solution for Bullet's defeat. Now, as for where this fight does take place, I think it's made immediately obvious with the very next glorious shot of what appears to be the entirety of the worst generation, minus Law, Zoro, and of course, Blackbeard, all taking on Bullet in one of his mech forms. And this is just, wow. This is one of those shots I've been dreaming about ever since the supernovas were first introduced. Except I've always pictured them standing as a united front against someone like Kaido, but you know what? This will definitely do. It's going to be pretty incredible to see how desperate these guys are to actually team up for a change, because traditionally members of the worst generation, they, uh, they don't get along all that easily. But you know what? This is followed by shots of each and every one of them getting systematically wrecked. But that's because even this epic conflict appears to be a simple warm up for the main event as the trailer goes on to introduce the dream team of the film. We have Sabo, Boa Hancock, Buggy the Clown, Smoker, Rob Lucci, Trafalgar Law, and of course, the man himself, Monkey D. Luffy. And this is where I legitimately got chills. And I am so glad that they did not show anything at all of these guys in action, because the One Piece films have a tendency of very much giving away everything in the trailer. Like Film Gold, where they showed Luffy's final attack and Tazora's defeat, all before I even got into the cinema. But the Stampede trailer leaves us with just our imaginations at work, for the finale anyway, and I love that. It's also just such a great selection of characters to combine into the final all-star team. Although rather interestingly, both Buggy and Boa Hancock shots are almost certainly not taken from the final battle, because they have that grey overcast background, as opposed to the volcanic wasteland thing. So this implies to me that they'll probably have some sort of change in costume or appearance that the creators don't want to reveal in the trailer. That or the two of them aren't actually part of the final team, which I really hope isn't the case, because Boa Hancock in particular just deserves to kick some ass. I think she's been criminally underused in the series so far, and the extended media she does get featured in like 3D2Y just turn her fights into a glorified striptease, which hey, man, it has its audience. The person I'm most excited for is definitely Luchi though. He is the only one of this dream team who comes from a properly antagonist antagonistic background. Like for example, Buggy and Smoker have that background as well, but one is more comical and one is morally just, leading both of them to become natural allies of Luffy. But Luchi is extraordinarily ideologically opposed to Luffy, and he is of course the natural enemy of Sabo as well, with him being a revolutionary and all. So I'm looking forward to seeing just what it takes for him to make the decision to fight alongside this group, as well as his dynamics with the other members. And that's the end of the trailer, or is it? Because capping things off, we have a message from Ichiro Oda himself, which reads, the team finally made an all-star movie. Awesome. And you know what? After seeing that trailer, you almost don't need the seal of approval, but that message just caps off what was a glorious one minute and 42 second YouTube experience. This trailer has my hopes for One Piece Stampede set at a maddeningly high level. So much so that I am legitimately starting to worry about whether or not I'm hyping it up too much in my own head and setting myself up for disappointment in some way. But I just don't know how else to feel. Every new piece of information this film throws at me is endlessly exciting. And yeah, I know that there's stuff I haven't covered in this video, like Bullet seemingly being able to use Haki with his mechs, but it's all a bit of an overload really. At this point there's not a whole lot more to say without seeing the film itself, oh I guess that is unless another official trailer pops out, which you know, it isn't unheard of, but I feel like we are more than ready now. In fact with this trailer I'm already straddling the line of feeling like I know a bit too much about how the narrative structure of the film is going to play out, so I really just want it to be released. Sadly though, I live in Australia, so it's highly unlikely that it's going to be coming here or to the Western world in general anytime soon. But if you're anywhere near Japan, One Piece Stampede is still set for release on the 9th of August, and hopefully it will come to the rest of the world not too long after that. 
But that pretty much does it for this discussion on the official trailer for One Piece Stampede. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but apply to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the trailer. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.